So I imagine most of you know who the FPC is. They're a group who sues our government mainly for their outrageous gun laws. And they're currently bringing a lawsuit to California among a lot of other places. And mainly the lawsuit is surrounding the reciprocity between California and other states. Meaning if you live in Oregon, for example, and you have a relative that is in California, or maybe you just want to drive down to go to the, one of the beaches or whatever it is. If you have certain gun laws in Oregon and you want to just cross the border, they pretty much treat it like you're going into another country, right? There was just an article the other day of a guy who is facing a lot of prison for bringing ammo to Turks and Caicos, mistakenly. Events started by what Watson says was a simple mistake on a trip to Turks and Caicos two weeks ago not realizing his duffel bag contained deer hunting bullets from a trip months earlier. The Turks and Caicos government tightened its laws in 2022 around firearms and ammunition with a mandatory term of imprisonment of not less than 12 years. Now, I want to put a big disclaimer surrounding the videos where I talk about these lawsuits and gun laws. I believe there should be no gun laws. I believe that the Second Amendment is very clear when it says shall not be infringed. But I also think it's important for people to know what's going on in their certain states so they can understand their risk level. Some people don't give a shit. Some people want to not give a shit, but they have a family and they have to make sure they're taken care of. So they can't take as much risk as other people. So the FPC is suing Rob Bonta, who is the attorney general of California. And I'm going to read some of this because I think it's super important for people to understand. In the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, the Supreme Court held that law-abiding citizens of this nation have a general right to publicly carry firearms for self-defense, and therefore states cannot condition exercise of that right on the showing of an atypical need for self-defense. Pretty solid, right? But then we get into what exactly California does, and they're not alone on this as far as if you decide to travel to that state. California, however, prevents law-abiding citizens of the United States who do not reside in California from exercising their constitutionally protected right to carry loaded, operated firearms in public. State law generally prohibits individuals from carry firearms, either openly or concealed in public, and not residents are not eligible for a license to carry a firearm in public. Indeed, California's unconstitutionally restrictive scheme provides no path for non-residents to carry a firearm lawfully in public at all. As a result, individual plaintiffs, Hoffman, Orin, or Sensiba, have been issued carry licenses in their respective home states and are allowed by other states that either do not require a license or which offer us reciprocity based upon the licenses they hold are barred from lawfully carrying a firearm in public for self-defense when they visit California. So I think this is an incredibly big win for California and for the Second Amendment in general that the FPC is suing California for this because it brings up a couple of super solid points. If you live in, let's say, Idaho, and you pretty much do whatever the fuck you want with your guns, you carry, you open carry, whatever, and you decide to drive into California for whatever reason, all of a sudden you're a criminal? Oh, you're not following the 10 round magazine limit that California has, you're a criminal. Oh, you're concealed carrying your gun due to constitutional carry? As soon as you cross that border into California, you're a criminal. Does that make any sense? Like I said in the beginning, it's like you're going into a new country. Then they go in to say this ban is unconstitutional. Individuals like plaintiffs do not lose protection of their rights under the First Amendment speech or religion clause when they cross state lines, nor do they lose their protections under the Fourth Amendment prohibition on unreasonable searches and seizures. They likewise do not surrender their Second Amendment protected rights when they travel outside their home state. Got some big news from my favorite coffee company and the official coffee of heavy duty country, Blackout Coffee. I already popped this thing open. They just came out with their premium instant coffee. Now, I gotta tell you, this stuff is great when I'm traveling, great when I'm in a rush, comes in these little packets, and like always, it's got the blackout guarantee behind it. As I showed you, they got these new mugs, new shirts, and if you didn't know yet, they have their investment campaign going on right now. The first one was very successful. A lot of you are part owners of Blackout, and you can still do it. 
There is gonna be a link below the video if you wanna be a part owner of your favorite coffee. If not, there is always a discount code below the video for some amazing coffee. The people in our government are consistently trying to disarm us, and it's almost like all of these states are working together now. How about this? How about all of the states simply f off and understand that this is a God-given right? We have a responsibility to protect ourselves. What is so hard to understand about that? The fact that FPC has to sue California because people travel in and out, and if you carry a firearm in California, oh my God, dude, you're a criminal. Have y'all seen downtown LA? Have you seen the gang activity? Have you seen the shootings that go on there? I don't think people really give a sh the people who are the problem there, they don't care because they have no risk. They shoot someone, they get away with it because the cops don't show up on time. Or they got a super woke DA who just doesn't care and they let him out without a bond. Then they go on to say, this court should enter a judgment that declares California's non-resident carry ban unconstitutional and enjoins defendant from enforcing the residency requirement for carry applications with respect to otherwise qualified individuals. This is obviously in regards to California respecting other states concealed carry holders. I think it really should go a step further though. There's something called constitutional carry in many states. And for example, when this was passed in Texas, it was astounding how many people were against it. And the people who were super against it were the people who provided these concealed carry training classes and then permits because they essentially lost their business at that point, other than the people who just want a concealed carry license in order to help facilitate gun purchases. But a lot of people, oddly, were not a fan of it because they think that you being a concealed carry holder automatically means that you're a responsible gun owner, and if you don't have one, then you aren't, which is total crap. I think, like I said, they should go one step further and make this a constitutional carry, meaning if you go across state lines, and your state has constitutional carry, you should have that right wherever you go in the US. Now other countries are gonna decide what they wanna do, but in our country, if you have residency in Texas and you wanna, for some reason, drive to California, you shouldn't have to worry about 14,000 different laws that California has in regards to guns. It's just goofy. So if the FPC wins this lawsuit, this is going to be an amazing victory for the Second Amendment community. And ultimately, it's gonna be a slap in the face to Gavin Newsom because he's essentially trying to completely get rid of the Second Amendment. I don't know if y'all saw it, but he tried to implement the 28th Amendment to get rid of the Second Amendment. Has not done anything. Now, he says the amendment will place in the Constitution gun safety measures that he says Democrats, Republicans, independents, and gun owners would support while leaving the Second Amendment unchanged. What the f*** are you talking about? Now, this is part of the proposal. It would raise the minimum, minimum age to buy a gun from 18 to 21. It would also mandate universal background checks. It would establish waiting periods when buying guns and prevents people from buying assault rifles. Who the f*** do you think you are, man? Do you think our founding fathers wrote the Second Amendment so they could have Gavin Newsom just shit on it? Oh, here's the 28th Amendment. We can get rid of the Second Amendment. You're welcome. No, Gavin. Why don't you sit down and understand that one, your state is in big trouble. And two, your gun laws there are outrageously bad. I feel bad for everybody who lives in California and has to deal with them.